Uh, before I introduce this afternoon's speaker, there are a few people we need to thank. This year's festival is in partnership with the University at Albany Program in Writing and Critical Inquiry, the University at Albany Office of the Vice Provost and Dean of Undergraduate Education, the University at Albany Libraries, and the Red Cro American Red Cross of Northeastern New York. We are co-sponsored by the University at Albany Vice President for Research, the New York State Writers Institute, the University at Albany Alumni Association, the University at Albany Auxiliary Services, the University of Albany Department of English, the University of Albany Department of Anthropology, the University of Albany Department of Literatures, Languages, and Culture, the University of Albany Red Cross Club, and Humanities New York with support from the National Endowment for the Humanities. The 2021 festival explores one of the world's most popular and enduring images, the vampire. Its folklore comes to us from almost every continent and has inspired hundreds of films from around the globe. Not to mention novels, short stories, plays, TV shows, fine arts, comic books, and more. Because it is so universal, the vampire has proved a powerful metaphor for the prescient matters, from imperialism to the AIDS pandemic, Black Lives Matter to Me Too movement, arts and immortality, to the death and decay of affect. As Bram Stoker scholar Nina Orbach has said, every age embraces the vampire it needs. This year's festival benefits the American Red Cross of Northeastern New York. To help them do the amazing work that they do, we have partnered with the UAlbany Red Cross Club. There is donation information in the back of the room, right at the Red Cross table, right there. Um, remember, every cent can help save a life. Now for this afternoon's speaker. It is a pleasure to welcome Dr. Carmen Serrano to introduce today's first film. Associate Professor of Spanish, Lang Associate Professor of Spanish Languages, Literatures, and Culture, Latin American, Caribbean, and U.S. Latino studies. Dr. Serrano's research focuses on limits and borders. As a scholar of 20th and 21st century Latin American and U.S. Latinx literature and culture, she analyzes the ways in which literature and films manifest monstrous and non-normative bodies, the human and the non-human, the corporeal and the spectral, and the dead and the undead. She examines how these bodies either support or undermine social hierarchy. In particular, she analyzes the ways in which the monstrous and the spectral embody fears and anxieties that speak to a specific cultural moment. This afternoon's feature will give her a lot to say for TV. It is a pleasure to welcome Dr. Sarah. Thank you so much. Um, thank you, Ray, for inviting me for this uh, presentation, this World Boston Festival. I love vampires, and I've been writing about them for quite some time. Um, and Guillermo del Toro's work is a, is a work that I've been following um, for a while. Um, as many of you know, he was the director of The Devil's Back Home, 2001. Pan's Labyrinth, all the soul Spanish professors at some point will teach this film, I recommend it. Hellboy, 2004. Crimson Peak and The Shape of Water, which won an Oscar, to the, his 2018 film. Um, and right now in theaters, Adler is coming out, and he's uh, produced that with Scott Cooper. So um, he started out in Mexico as a film director, and then has moved on to Hollywood and produced such famous films as Blade II, um, which is a, a very interesting film for me because I love the way Guillermo del Toro changes what we think we're going to see. So with Blade II, um, what I thought was really innovative was the way the vampire's fangs changed. Whereas before we had large fangs, in Blade Two we had this projectile tongue that pierces the victim, so from like six feet away. I mean, it's ridiculous. And he does this again. Like, yeah, it's, it's amazing. So I love being surprised by how he takes what we think we're going to expect and changes it completely. So I don't want to talk too much because I was a little late so we can talk more about this um, after the film. But as you watch Coronos, which came out in Mexico in 93, we see that he plays again with the vampire drum. And, and he has bugs, he looks like some bugs. And here we're going to see a scarab shaped device. Um, so what I want to ask you is, as you watch the film, notice how he's changed what we expect of the vampire. Like how is it different, how is it the same? And then, most, most importantly for me, I like to see what this means. Like, what sort of social critique is he doing? Or is he even more aesthetic critique? What, what is he doing? So that's always what's really interesting when I watch vampire films. 
It's like, what can these films be talking about beyond the monster? So I'm going to just leave it brief and start with the film. We can talk. Thank you.